I'm Robert Nguoli from Attentive, and I'm here with Brian Morell of Place Play and Ian Sefferman of Mobile Dev HQ, and we're here to talk about app development, uh, discuss what's going on, and potentially to talk about uh, new, new opportunities. So, quick intro, could you tell us about what you're doing at Mobile Dev HQ? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, uh, at Mobile Dev HQ, we're doing app store optimization, which is essentially SEO for mobile apps, so we help app developers rank more highly in app store search. And how about you, Ryan? What are you working on with PlacePlay? Uh, so my name is Ryan Morell, and I'm uh, CEO of PlacePlay, and we help app developers make more money with targeted advertising. Uh, it's really simple. And like I said, I'm Roby with Aptenev, and what we do is we help uh, app developers talk to their customers more effectively. We think app stores are great for distribution, but they're the last place for a customer conversation, so we fix that problem and get people higher ratings, higher downloads, and higher customer retention. So let's just jump right into it. Let's talk about Zynga. We know that uh, their growth on the web is flattening and they've been saying mobile is a real big growth area in terms of where people are spending time, uh, but it doesn't seem like their monetization strategy is keeping up with that. Mm -hmm. What do you think the pros and cons are of their mobile strategy today? Um, but I think it's been interesting because it's clearly, up until recently, been a secondary platform for them, right? So is there, DAUs on the web were going like this. It was like, well, we don't really need to focus on mobile. But now that their DAUs for the web are going like <laughs> this, mobile's a much bigger concern. So I, I think that created two problems for them. So one, it set expectations that were unrealistic. Um, and two, there's no, in, there's no favored nation status on mobile, right? So Facebook, you know, clearly Singa did a lot of things right, but Facebook made them, right? Yeah. Um, they had that favored nation status. There's no way to get it on mobile. Um, so trying to compete fair and square with other well-capitalized companies that know mobile really well is, is clearly proving to be hard for them. Um, and, and I think we're starting to get to a point where we're maybe seeing some reactionary moves as opposed to like strategic moves. So, I mean, Draw Something was a fantastic game that was doing really well, but they may have overpaid for that a little bit, <laughs> considering what it's done since they acquired it. Um, so, yeah. What about you, Ian? Yeah, you know, I, I think I think Draw Something is a great example of, of where Zynga is doing wrong. On, on the web front, they, we can talk about whether or not we believe that Zynga was actually innovative in their game design. But the, the, EA suit to is, about the EA suit is pretty clear that maybe they weren't. Yeah. But, but on the, on the mobile front, I think that they, they didn't even try, right? Most of their mobile efforts are acquisitions. And so they, they really have no core DNA in mobile yet. And from if they want to acquire to in order to build that core DNA, then that's actually, I think, really smart. If they're just acquiring to try to find the next hot thing, it's never going to work out because by the time you've bought it, it's already going to be on its way down. Yep. Uh, so figuring out how they can how they can build mobile into the core DNA is I think their biggest challenge. Yeah. And I think that DNA issue is often underestimated in its importance. So we've seen lots of game companies, and EA is one of them, with a, a studio acquisition strategy, right? And so they'll, they'll buy, a, oh, you're successful at this, and you're developing this, so we're going to buy you and bring you in-house. And then you know that one time they were successful was really an aberration. It wasn't consistent. Yep. And because it wasn't internal DNA, they don't know why they strayed away from success. They don't know how to lead a company back to, to being good at it. And I, I think that's underestimated. So I would be most concerned looking at Zynga, if I was them, about that lack of really just understanding and the, the feeling around how to do mobile correctly and how to evolve with it. Yeah. Well, I think that's a, that's a really interesting point, especially as you... And we, I, I'm not trying to diminish the accomplishments of... OMG Pop because clearly that's a fantastic game, but that company was dead on fines, right? And that draw something was their their hit title. So much like Angry Birds, who has parlayed their success, Rovio was a nobody, right? right? They'd done a bunch of stuff and it all failed. Um, so I, I'm not convinced that those acquisitions and their acquisition strategy is buying that core DNA, right? Like uh, it seems to me if they went after Giving Zynga M and A advice, 
it's very presumptuous. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like if they went after somebody like Z2 Live here in Seattle or Backflip or some of these other guys who were built from the ground up on mobile, um, that's probably the way to get to that, that core team that you guys are both talking about. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah, I think we're saying quite a bit about their DNA, their, their acquisition strategy. Maybe, maybe it's questionable, maybe it's, it's not the best way to acquire DNA, but if you're a mobile app developer, are you scared of them? Um, if I was a mobile, no. Uh, the only thing I'd be scared of is their ability to outspend me in user acquisition. Um, I, I, I don't know, and their ability to get their monetization metrics right, but I'm, but I'm not sure that that's there at this point. But they're no different than anybody else, <laughs> right? If I'm a mobile app developer, I'm way more worried about Gree or DNA or some of these other guys who are spending huge dollars on user acquisition. Yeah, I actually think that that's, that's sort of dead on. Uh, I would be worried from, from the standpoint of are they artificially going to inflate prices in, in ads and driving user acquisition? Um, but I think, I think most mobile developers, especially in the gaming space, have much more to worry about in terms of building an awesome game than they do in terms of their competition coming. Uh, I, I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. I guess maybe, the, sorry for interrupting, I think you were going to jump in. I guess the only thing I'd be worried about is them copying me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. No, I think, I think that's actually what I was, I was going to talk about is if you are a mobile app developer in general, okay, Zynga maybe not on radar, if you're making specific types of games, particularly games that have this with friends aspect, you're trying to be yeah. social and viral in that sense, um, you probably are more wary because you, if you're coming up with something that you think is innovative, there's a decent chance that they're going to find out and they might copy you or they might come talk to you and you've got to, you've got to be thinking maybe about those situations six months before, whereas yeah. most app developers don't have to be thinking about that problem. Yeah, but I would say also, and I kind of think we glossed over this a little bit, that Zynga did make a really good acquisition with New Toy, mm -hmm. um, and that with Friends series is clearly proving to be a, a good one for them. Yeah. Maybe not huge, but but really profitable probably. Yeah. Um, and so I guess that probably solved for some of their mobile DNA stuff because those guys had clearly had a bunch of experience. So we should be fair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a, that's true, and. Uh, to be fair, none of us are running public companies. Also right? yeah. so, uh, <laughs> They're doing a great job. Right. Anyways. Um, so I'd like to take, uh, take the conversation a little bit back to Facebook, which we talked about in a previous segment. And one of the things that Zynga really did in order to grow was that they really understood that the canvas on which you're building your game was a place not just to have the game, to, but to show related activity from friends, and then your friends could bring you back into games. And, and the space in Facebook on the web allows for that. But on the mobile device, we know we're really limited. Do you think that that changes the dynamic of how they've been growing? And part of this shift to mobile that's hard is that they don't have as much space to work with or they don't necessarily have as many tools that are effective? Uh, yeah, I, I think that's a, a big part of it, right? And as we also talked about before when we were talking about Facebook, it's hard to really understand how people are engaging with Facebook on mobile. I, I just don't know enough. I, I know for me, it's like a quick scan as versus the web. It's like slow. I'm going to read everything. I'm going to look at everything. So, so that's different. So that takes away a big inherent advantage that they had. Um, so yeah, I think that's a challenge. Uh, yeah. Ditto. Essentially. <laughs> uh, I, I think... Back when, back when Zynga started and was using Facebook really, really effectively, Facebook was the most spammy site out there, if you remember, right? Yeah. And, and, and Zynga was at the top of that list. Um, Facebook has closed that down, um, and I don't think that opportunity ever presents itself ever again. Um, so, I, I, you know, I, I, don't think, I don't think Zynga has that, that ability to do that again. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the interesting things is that we're certainly seeing really discrete experiences live on mobile really well. They're like a, Words with Friends is a wonderful example of taking advantage of the fact that you know people are waiting for the bus and they've got five minutes and yeah. it's just great for them to be like, duh, duh, duh. and then they're reminded two hours later by their friend that they have a move to make. And I think that that aspect, whether it's through Facebook or not, that like tying into the natural windows of opportunity on mobile seems like a big opportunity. 
but still the prevalence of being reminded without the space of Facebook around it seems to me to be a big challenge. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's our thoughts on Zynga. It's been a good conversation. Thanks for uh, paying attention. We'll talk a little bit about where we think these, these changes are happening, why it's, where it's coming from, why it's happening. Um, so my personal belief is some of it is just uh, product age. So the Kindle Fire at this point is a little long in the tooth. It's probably due for 